Hey Ratbags, it's Jade with another How to Survive. In the previous episode, I showed you guys how to get the red ant armor set and get ready for us exploring the ant hill. We're going to focus today on doing that and getting all of the bee armor. I'm going to explain the differences between the rotten bee armor set and the regular, and we're also going to go and get the bee stinger so you've got the full bee set at the moment. Why is it important in the early days? Well, it's a really powerful armor set. It's tier two, and although it's got some negatives because it's not a full set, it's rotten, it's still miles better than some of the other sets that you can find or have to spend time getting resources to craft. The Red Ant Hill has also got an absolute ton of the first upgrade materials you'll need to start progressing your tools or your armor sets to make them better. So as always, if you find these useful, do leave a like, check out the rest of my guides, and let's go how to survive day three. So we've now got our ant armor set, it's time to go into the ant hill. Now to be honest, you can do this without needing the red ant armor. But the red ant armor is going to be an armor set that you'll use time and time again for building your bases way until much later in the game. So it's absolutely worth crafting it and keeping it in good condition. Here is the red ant hill location on the map. It's pretty easy to spot, it's not too, too far from where you first spawn. So the red ant armor is meant to stop the red ants from attacking you as long as you don't attack them. Just one crucial thing, make sure you've got all three pieces equipped, like I didn't, like a noob when I first went over. Now creatures do aggro you for quite a while, you do have to run quite far, so make sure you're using blades of grass and any kind of terrain to avoid them if you really don't want to fight them. The ants usually forget after a few moments, especially if you haven't been trying to actually fully kill them, and then go ahead and just go through the ant hill. You will need at least maybe six to eight slime mold stalks if this is your first time, or at least maybe two regular torches. So definitely bring some extra resources with you. As you go through, like I said, as long as you don't hit any of these guys, they will leave you alone. The other crucial thing is do not touch any of their eggs. You don't have any need to, you need to go ahead and grab some of the kind of fungal growth that you get from killing certain creatures in the haze before you even think about grabbing some of the eggs. That's because they're only really useful for making into bombs. There is some sort of smoothies or foods that you can use the eggs for, but I don't think it's worth it right now. It's quite unusual to find that many eggs, I'm guessing, because it's still technically only the first two or three days that there's a whole bunch of them here. Now, the idea is that the more red ants you kill, the more of these eggs you'll find the next day, as this is how they respawn and hatch into the new ones. And that same thing goes for the rest of the ants, including black ants too. A popular myth is that black ants don't actually exist in the game because you rarely find them. Well, you just need to kill a whole ton of black ants to really have them spawning. Anyhow, this is what happens when you've accidentally picked an egg up. They will aggro you. Now, you can run past them, like I said, and for people that really don't want to be crafting the red ant armor, you can just run down here and avoid most of the trouble. You only have to really deal with a couple of soldier ants at the very end. You can jump into this water to avoid the ants that are following you. But these guys have a particular long memory, especially when you've tried stealing one of their eggs. I literally had to leave the whole entire ant hill and come back a few minutes later because I kept aggroing them. So once back in, stick to the left hand side when you come to that first area and then keep breaking open the marble rocks as you go. You should find at least two of them before you get towards the end of this tunnel. At the bottom you'll come across some soldier ants and there'll be two ways to go. Stick to the right hand side and again looking out for any smaller pieces of the shards that are laying around. You'll come across another marble rock Right inside the next chamber is a fresh mint. You won't be able to get to get your tier two hammer. And just like a lot of areas, you will need to revisit this. So don't be thinking, I'll wait until I get a tier two hammer to explore. Do come in here as early as you can to pick up the burgle chip. That's really important if you want some upgrades to some utilities. And you saw that we got a piece of the rotten bee armor. So you can pretty much go around, it's all just the small same sort of tunnels leading somewhere. And this fork on the left is what you're looking for with the water inside it. Head down and grab the 500 raw science. When you come out the other side, there'll be a brittle quartzite rock, which is slightly more square shaped. Follow the slight path upwards and again, grab more of the brittle shards on the floor and you come to another chamber. This time, this chamber will have a hole inside and you may encounter some eggs. On the right hand side is where you'll find the next piece of the bee armor. If you really want to get an egg, you can make slop smoothies using them. It doesn't really do anything, but if you want to see what happens, then go ahead and grab one here, as it's usually safe as long as there's no soldiers directly around. Grab the shards and head towards the red grass. You should come across 500 raw science, and again, just before you leave here, there'll be some more of the marble shards on the floor. 
Keep following the entrance way and you're into another larger chamber with a milk molar. Again, you'll be back here one day with a tier two hammer. Grab more of the shards and we're gonna move into the next chamber. There's not much else going on around here. You'll find maybe another couple of shards towards the entrance up on the right hand side a tunnel and this will lead you back to that original fork that you were at where I said take the left hand side instead of the right. We don't want to actually leave it just yet we're actually going to turn back round and go through the other side of this chamber. I'm going to do my best not to cut it as I know I aggravate some people sometimes with my cuts forgetting that some of you guys are complete noobs and it still might be a bit confusing but you can see here as long as you're kind of sticking you can see there's a sort of pillar in the middle and you'll be able to get open another brittle quartzite keeping that wall to the right hand side and keep going further and there'll be another brittle marble. Keep going and you should come into another chamber where you see 500 raw science and another brittle quartzite. And you can see there's even more marble here for you to get. So this is the perfect place to come really to go and start upgrading your weapons and tools once you've got some sort of base camp going and you're thinking about building the upgrade station. In this chamber, we're also going to get the final piece of the Rotten Bee armor set. There's a little ledge blocked by a massive boulder. With a run and a jump, you should be able to get up. And next to the skull is the face mask. I mentioned this in the previous How to Survive, but basically the Rotten Armor sets aren't amazing. They will help you for sure, and they're better than some of the other beginner sets. But I don't think it's worth upgrading past level 5. You don't get any kind of armor bonus set when you're wearing all three, although you do get the actual bonuses from each individual. So in this case, the actual B armor is really good for stunning creatures using bow shots. If you're following the path as I'm talking, you should have hopefully come across the next scabs. And I was just running through some of the ones that I didn't show completely from the day before. Bugged is in the old ant hill, and new mauve is the one that we just picked up. And then keep going up, you'll find some more of the quartzite. And if you keep going, eventually we'll end up back into that chamber where there was a hole. That hole leads directly into where you first discovered the first piece of the bee armor and there will be that tier two rock that you won't be able to break yet. If you're finding it very difficult to get through here, bring some extra slime stalks and just drop them on the floor to show exactly where you've been. I dropped down the hole on purpose just to show you guys. And also this is where sometimes ants drop food. As you saw there, I was picking up some of the Billy hot dogs. But that is pretty much the ant hill completely done. You'll have to come back here with a tier two hammer just to get the milk molar and that rock that you couldn't break earlier. But otherwise keep heading all the way up and eventually you'll make your escape. But yeah, the B armor set is really good for now. Keep wearing it, upgrade it up to level five, but don't do anything with it after that. As soon as you're able to go and hand the chip over to Burgle and not forgetting to go ahead and scan the B armor sets as well as an egg. It should unlock the Brathurst bomb and that's what we're going to be using much later. But like I said, you need fungal growth. That's a bit more challenging to get. Hand the chip to Burgle and this is what you unlock. You'll get upgrades to Fiber Bandage, meaning you don't need as many resources to craft them. Canteen upgrade as well as buff lungs mutation, which gives you more stamina. The sign set creatures and the scab scanner scabs. Out of all that stuff, I personally think it's only worth getting the buff lungs for now. Unless you've been doing lots of quests and keeping up lots of raw science. The bandage efficiency is good, but it's so slow to heal yourself, you're better off just making sure you've got plenty of cooked meat or lots of granola bars. As I mentioned as well, the canteen upgrade, I don't think it's that amazing. Yes, it will give you some more drops to hold, but two is usually enough to get through the day, and I'd rather focus on getting the next upgrade. Remember, you do need to buy everything to complete the game fully, but right now, focus on the stuff that you really need. So fortified bases is something that I would have got from the initial set, and the meat shield is the one that I really wanted. Now I've got enough raw science, we can get it. You can see the scab scanners as well. Now there are some areas where you don't really want to have to come back to and the scabs are literally everywhere. And there's so many of them, nearly like 50 I think. So it could be worth getting that if you're 100% completionist. But otherwise it could be something that you get in a little while once you've got more raw science. I would actually focus on getting the raw science scanner instead. Again, only if you want some extra help getting the raw science. Before we head home, we've got a few hours of daylight left. Let's jump into the pond and pick up another rotten weapon. We're gonna complete our bee look by getting the bee stinger. Now it's worth grabbing some of the other resources and scanning some of the creatures while you're in here for the first time. The tadpole, once cooked, can be really beneficial for food and also water. You can munch on the algae that you find in abundance and it's worth picking up some of the wax that's underneath the lily pads right now too. You need the wax for a whole bunch of stuff, but mainly to craft your own peplet dagger. 
it's worth familiarizing yourself with the water. Look out for the air bubbles that are coming up from these plants and obviously avoid Trudy. Now some triads will be telling you you can block Trudy, but really do you want to risk it because it'll only take two hits from her and pretty much you're dead. So usually the best advice is to avoid it for now. Go to slightly shallow areas and it won't be able to follow you. Hop onto the lily pads and we're going to go to the furthest one out directly opposite the pagoda. I just bought the extra health mutation so I might as well equip it. And we're going to go directly down. It's important that you jump. If you jump the momentum will help you carry down. And look out for the bubbles that are coming up because that's exactly what you're going to follow going all the way. If you're following it directly like this there's a big chance that you'll go through some of them as they're coming up meaning you've got even more oxygen. It is a bit dangerous and it's a bit scary in your first few days of grounded doing this. You don't have to do it right now. You can come back much later, but I figure since we're here and I'm showcasing some of the other stuff in my previous episode, it's worth getting this rotten weapon now. You'll go through an entrance way and you'll see the T-Rex. Grab the bee sting up from its mouth and then swim back up. If you want, you can hover around where the air comes out of the broken pipe, but otherwise keep swimming up directly and you should just about make it. Of course, there's lots of other areas to explore in there and that will lead us towards the underwater lavatories, but you're going to need some breathing equipment to get there really, unless you're an absolute pro. And that is pretty much taking us towards the end of the day. We're going to run back now and take a look at what we can craft and how good some of the armor sets are that we just acquired. Scanning in resources will open up all the new stuff like the fin flops, the bubble helmet, the slime lantern, and like I said, other stuff as well, like the pebble dagger. The rotten weapons might not seem that amazing yet, but there is a charm that we can get that makes them much stronger. And you've probably seen that if you are vaguely even played Grounded before, as it was one of the most popular videos everyone was doing on how to get the rotten berry charm. But even without that, it's still worth having some of these weapons. I always though focus on making sure I get the Sprig Bro upgraded, and maybe a little bit for the rotten larvae blade, and definitely for the bee stinger. The arm sets, you might as well go ahead, since you haven't got anything else to really upgrade other than the red and armor, but I don't think that red and armor is probably the best set. For me, I prefer having the grub set, as I prefer playing with more stamina than more carrying ability, which is what the ant armor set gives you, unless you're going to be spending a lot of time kiting enemies over to the red ant hill. So what's the difference between the rotten and the regular? Well, the regular chest piece, for example, has 15 defense and five resistance. The rotten chest piece has 12 defense and five resistance. And of course you don't get the full armor set when wearing all three pieces, but that's it. So in the early days, it's definitely worth having a tier two armor set, which the B armor is, compared to all the rest of the sets, unless you're doing specific thing like going through the red ant hill, or you're doing something where you want a lot more stamina using maybe like the grub armor. My personal favourite armour to wear though in the early days is going to be something like aphid slippers and a mixture of other stuff. Remember each piece of the Rotten Bee armour set on its own gives you a 20% chance to inflict further stun damage. If you're wearing all three pieces that's 60% chance that you're going to trigger extra stun damage while using it and a bow. The set bonus is called Pollen Shot which you won't have until you get a full regular B set. So as long as you're wearing the full full set, all three pieces, you'll get a 25% chance to release a cloud of pollen that will give five extra stun. But there we go. I think I've fully explained that. Probably a bit too boring, but I'm going into more depth and detail with these walkthroughs more than I normally would with just a regular playthrough. Look out for more special guides talking about armor in better ways, ranking up the armor sets and giving you an idea about what ways to progress. But for now, there you go. That's how you get the Rotten Bee armor set, complete the Ant Hill, get a ton of raw science points and start to investigate our exploration of the pond. Hope you find these guides useful. If you are, please leave a like and I'll see you at Bags for more soon. Bye bye.